اللهم يا من جعلت السحر ابتلاء فأنت برحمتك لن تنسانا وأنت جل جلالك الذي خلقت له الدواء فلكل داء دواء ولكل ابتلاء الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسول بالهدى ودين الحق الذرى على دين كل وكفى بالله شهيد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد أحب في الله Allah Rabbul Izzah says the one who is in the dark and the one who is in the light are not the same and the one who is knowledgeable and the one who is not knowledgeable are not the same today there's a lot of a lot of parents who they don't give their children their youth tarbiya or their children the correct tarbiya and they end up becoming a catalyst of their own downfall because the knowledge was not there was not implemented there this is a situation of today today i'm going to narrate for you a story and this has happened to so many people so many people and it's still happening and it has already happened the story begins by few young men they always gather and play 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 but while they are playing any animal passes in their face they go after it and hit it or want to kill it one of the days they were passing by a graveyard and anything they see they hit it and in the mix there was a boy called Marwan and his brother anything they see they hit it so marwan brother saw a cat black cat walking in the grave and the black cat had white patches in the front marwan brother went for it and hit the cat so bad until the cat was groaning and crying very badly one of the boys saw it who was not among them who was a teenager as well and he says what are you doing it is haram to hit a cat it is forbidden to hit a cat this is not correct what you've done and the boy is chilling he's doing good action but in fact he's doing evil and they left there the first day passes the second day midday marwan's brother start feeling heavy chest and sweaty and he told his brother marwan who was older than him they were both teenagers marwan i'm feeling this what's happening i say don't worry just go and have a cold drink go and have something to drink and he told go away he goes and drinks and it disappears that feeling comes in the night he sleeps with his brothers in the room marwan and his brothers and the brother who hit the cat they sleep all together in one room they all go sleeps but the brother who hit the cat he cannot sleep the sleep is not coming so he looks around everyone is asleep apart from him and suddenly he hears like a car or like movement outside the window and he jumps up and looks and opens the window to look what is there and he saw a massive figure with a cat face and is telling him you are an in criminal you are a bad man you you are a bad man and he jumped and goes back to the bed but suddenly he start he feeling someone punching him in the ribs and he start yelling mom 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 his dad and mom run to the room when they run to the room all his brothers walk walk so and he say what's going on son he said 
There's a man with the face of a cat. There's a man with the face of a cat outside. There's a man with the face. And they look, there's nothing there. And his father told him, hey, stop it. You're hallucinating. He said, no, dad, it's the truth. I've been hit. My ribs. Through the fear of seeing that creature, that long man, black, ugly man with the face of the cat, the fear that he brought to that boy, that teenager, that man, it was overwhelming, even though the hit, he got hit in the ribs, it's nothing. He didn't even fail, fail it. But slowly, slowly, he started feeling the pain in the ribs. And he started telling his dude on his mom in the night, Mom, my pain in the rib, pain in the rib. When they lift the she's short, there's a massive, massive bruise in the ribs, massive. And the pain is not stopping, it's deteriorating slowly by slowly. And he's crying, Marwan's brother. And his mom and his dad decided to take him to the hospital. They took him to the hospital in the night. And he got all the checks, blood checks and everything. Blood, che blood checks comes up. He's got bruise in the ribs and the liver. And they say if he cut his own, he's going to have a cancer liver. Cancer liver. The parents got shocked and said, how come? The father is saying, how come? How is that? Our boys were absolutely fine. The doctor told him, I don't know. But I'm talking about the bruise. The bruise is got there. And he had, an, he, he had an, so much impact on him in the ribs and the liver. So if he cut his own, he will have cancer. Liver cancer. So they arranged him to put him in one of the room, hospital room, and he goes with his mom, he lies down, and his mom sitting down there, thinking, and start reading the Quran slowly, and a voice speaks from his mouth, and he's telling, Oi, stop it. And the mom looks, who's speaking? That's not my son speaking. He say, Oi, stop. And the mother stop. I say, who's speaking? And she starts saying, A'udhu billah min shaitan rajim. Who's speaking? She says, it's me. Your boy has harmed me so bad. Your boy has hit me so bad. And now I am revenging. The mama got sh shocked. And, uh, and then he ca she called the father quickly. And the father comes in. And they're all hearing the voice of someone else from the voice of their son. And the mother tells the junior, please. My boy is ignorant. He didn't know anything. If he hit you, he hit you by mistakes. He says, hit me by mistake, no chance. I am revenging. I am revenge. This is a revenge act. And I'm not going to leave. No matter what you do. I am going to make him feel the pain he f I felt. The and quiet. And Marwan's brother comes back to normal. And he tells, and he starts telling, move. He's here, he's here, the man with the cat face. He's here, the man with the cat face. And he says, somebody was talking from my mouth, but I feel the person talking from the back of my neck, but I had no control over my tongue. And the mother and the father start get worried, and they start searching what happened. And they found out their son has hit a cat in the graveyard and there was a man a boy who was warning him so they were looking for a way out so they go and look to that boy and tell that boy can you come and read on our son and the man says i need to ask my dad he went and asked his dad this this teenager was upright the mother and the father they were upright upon the quran and sunnah they agreed but the father told him listen if you go and start doing that Remember, you'll bring harm to our house. You'll bring harm to your family members. You'll bring harm to your sisters. Or they will be targeted. The jinns will look for an opportunity to target the family. So he comes back and says, no, I can't do it. Now, they are in a dilemma. The mother and the father, they don't know what to do. They start searching for a sheikh or somebody who can remove the jinn from there. And they found a woman. They had a, there's a woman right in the corner of the town. 
and they would go there. When they reached there, the genie spoke straight away. Say, where are you taking me? Where are you taking me in the car? He said, the person you're taking me is a magician. You're just wasting your time. He's a magician. And when they reach there, they actually find out that the woman is a magician. And they didn't do anything. They left there. So the mother decided to take the son to Umrah. They went to Umrah. So the mother went and did her Umrah and do her tawaf and everything. So that time she's doing tawaf and everything, she left her son in the hotel. And the son was in the hotel. Now while he's in the hotel, the genie appeared. The man, the genie with a, uh, the man with a cat face appeared to him, in front of him and started saying, listen, I'm not going to leave you. I will show you who I am. And the boy starts screaming and get worried and start sweating and the man disappeared and starts sweating and he's worried, he says. And his mom just popped in in the room and said, mom, he's here, he's here, mom, mom, he's here, mom. His mom starts reading and starts seeking refuge from Allah and she finishes her umrah and she goes back. She goes back, she takes the son to the hospital. Again, they gave her medication and everything to use for the bruise and for the treatment of the place. Every time the mother reads, the junes pops up and say, I'm not going to leave, I will show him. And Alhamdulillah, by Allah, they found a Raqi. And they went to the Raqi. They called and the Raqi came home. When he came home, he started reading. They say all we can remember is him reading Surah Al-Zizal too much. And the jinn was screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming. Until they came to agreement, the jinn left the body. And from there, Marwan brother was better. And Marwan brother and the Raqi advise, and the Raqi advise Marwan mum and Marwan father uh, that your son, Marwan's brother, that he needs to hold tight to Salah. He needs to read his Azkar. From there, that boy, he became, he did a half of, half of the Quran, he could memorize from there, he never left his salah again because he went through pain for a period of time until Allah removed this calamity from him of the jinn. And one of the days, he was out hanging with his friends. There was a wedding. And then suddenly they start seeing the father was there, the mother was there. They start seeing cloud and the smoke. And that smoke appeared. And then he appeared to be the jinn cut. The man with a face, the, the, the man with a cat face. And he started telling Marwan brother, how are you? I remember I am still here. I am watching you. And don't harm no any animal. And he disappears. It's a lesson to be learned. It's a lesson where a lot of people, I personally have seen it with my own eyes, a lot of teenagers harming cats or animals these animals jinni take shape of these animals particularly cat dog crow spiders rat these animals jinni take these shapes of these animals instead of you harming warn it seek refuge from allah warn it let it disappear and let it go away from your sight if you harm it you get harmed because you become a valley, you become an oppressor. Ask Allah to protect us from becoming an oppressor. It's, be it's better for you to be oppressed than you to become an oppressor. So it's a lesson. These stories I'm narrating, it's a lesson to be learned from it. This is the story of a cat jinn. Stay tuned for more. Abu Yahya from the Rukhi Talk. Wa akhru da'wana. وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين